Gojo is a first-year high school student who has a deep passion for making Hina dolls. When he was a kid, upon seeing his grandpa's work, he fell in love with them and committed to making the best dolls. But the bitter truth is not everyone will appreciate your work and would find faults in the things no matter what you do. For our Gojo, he heard his first criticism when he shared his passion with his dear friend. The girl was creeped out. She finds it weird for a boy to have such a lame interest. She criticizes his work and left him. Since then they never talked. For most of us, it's just a moment that will pass on. However, for Gojo it was painful. He was devastated to hear it from his friend. And since then, he never talked about his interest to anyone and preferred staying alone working on his passion. After Gojo's parents died in a car accident, he has been under the care of his grandpa. Gojo's grandpa runs a shop where he sells Hina dolls that he creates. It's not a very high-earning occupation, but he loves it, and it's enough to feed them both. He is always in worry to see Gojo working on Hina dolls and insists him to go out with his friends. Gojo is a kind and gentle boy. He doesn't lie, but to make sure his grandpa is not worried, he lied about having a lot of friends. But he is unable to hang out with them as they are busy with their club activities. Even though it's a lie, this makes Grandpa feel a lot less worried. With this, Gojo has been living the same life where he every day work on Hina dolls. Until one day, a girl with blonde hair comes flying toward him. Her name is Marin, and she is the most popular and gorgeous girl in the entire school. After getting up, she apologizes in case Gojo got hurt. However, an unusual stain on Gojo's arm catches her attention. She gets curious and asks about it, but Gojo quickly pulls his arm away and tells her to not mind it. It is an ink stain that Gojo got this early morning while working on the dolls, and because of his past experience, he doesn't want her to feel creeped out. After Marin leaves, Gojo looks at her and admires her personality. Marin is popular not just because of her beauty, but also because she has a cheerful personality. She loves making friends and openly talks about her interest in anime and manga. Marin is known for rejecting guys just because they make fun of her interests. Marin is not a girl who will fall in love with a boy as long as he is handsome. Above all, she prefers a man who loves her and respects her interest. Because of all this, Gojo admires Marin. After school ends, a few students request Gojo to do their work as they have to go to their part-time job. Gojo doesn't object and does the work instead. Soon Marin enters the room and starts cleaning the classroom. Today it was her and the other student in charge of cleaning, but on seeing Gojo instead, she tells that they are taking advantage of his kindness. Gojo knows it but doesn't like denying someone's request. Marin gets pissed. She couldn't see someone doing things they doesn't like. She encourages him to stand up for himself because no one else will. A week passed by since Gojo's last interaction with Marin, but he still thinks about her words to be open about what you like or not. While sewing, the machine suddenly broke. Grandpa sends it for repair, but it would take some days. So in the meantime, Gojo after school ends uses the club sewing machine. Unlike the one at his home, this is much more modern and because of its smoothness, Gojo is amazed by the results. Just then, Marin enters the room. Gojo starts to panic and accidentally drops the doll. But before it touches the ground, he swiftly saves it. He is happy to see the doll is not damaged, but when he soon realizes what situation he is in, Gojo panics and tries to explain that it's not what it seems. However, Marin is just amazed to see that Gojo can sew clothes. She looks at the doll and starts praising how good it looks. Gojo couldn't be happier to hear it. It's the first time he has seen someone his age really enjoying the beauty of Hina dolls. Marin suddenly changes her clothes with an outfit she has been working on. She shows him a picture that she was trying to copy. And on seeing it, Gojo's inner artist comes out. He starts scolding Marin as her outfit lacks many details and doesn't even come close to that of the picture. But Gojo soon realizes his words are harsh, and it made Marin cry. He gets on his knees and apologizes for forgiveness. However, Marin is cool with it and is not mad at him. Marin explains that she is really interested in anime and manga. Because of them, 
She wants to be a cosplayer. But as she is incapable of sewing, she requests Gojo to help her in fulfilling her dream to become the person she admires. In Gojo's entire life, no one has ever praised his work. And because of it, he feels indebted and promises to do his best. Marin is very happy and starts dancing in enjoyment. To help Gojo in making the costumes, Marin hands over a guidebook. Since the weekend is coming up, Gojo promises to begin the work after it. Marin seems a bit upset but agrees. The next day it's Saturday. Someone rings the doorbell and Gojo goes to check thinking it is a customer for their shop. However, it's Marin who has come for the costume. She couldn't wait till Monday, so she searched for Gojo's shop's address and came. Without any hesitation, Marin enters the house and goes to Gojo's room. While she is looking around, Gojo is freaking out to see a girl has come over to his house. And he becomes more terrified when Marin takes off her clothes for Gojo to take her measurement. Somehow, Gojo gathers his courage and starts taking the measurements. One by one he writes them in his notebook. But when it came to measuring Marin's melon sizes, Gojo starts to panic and requests her to do it by herself. Marin explains the difficulty of measuring by herself, as she always gets different results. With no other choice, Gojo comes close to Marin. While shaking like crazy, he takes a deep breath and finally takes the measurements. With it, he is done with the measurements, but at the cost of his mental health. Before leaving, Marin gives the DVD of the anime to help Gojo in making the outfit. Gojo is very happy. With dedication, he studies the anime. At night, a lot of weird noise is coming from Gojo's room. So Grandpa goes to check it. Upon opening the door, he is stunned to witness his grandchild watching adult anime with so much dedication that he just casually greets him and resumes watching it without any care. Grandpa realizes that Gojo is at the age to experience such things, so he decides to not interrupt him and leaves. The next morning, Gojo wakes up after dreaming of Marin being naughty. All the episodes he watched did the work and because of it, he now feels guilty. At the school, he is having a hard time making eye contact with Marin and just gives a one-word response. After Marin leaves with her friends, seeing how close Marin is with Gojo, some girls start gossiping that it would be gross if Marin is dating Gojo. They are loud enough for Gojo to hear them. He understands what they are saying and afterward, whenever Marin tries to talk, he ignores her and runs away. Marin is sad as she doesn't know the reason Gojo is ignoring her. After school, she gives another shot and tries asking Gojo to hang out. But Gojo refuses and runs away. To make sure he doesn't have an encounter with Marin at the station, Gojo waits for a few minutes. But just then, Marin suddenly appears and surprises Gojo. She is pissed and asks the reason he has been ignoring her. Gojo finally reveals that he heard people talking about them going out, and he believes it would affect Marin's popularity among other students. Marin without any hesitation suggests Gojo that they should start dating then. Gojo starts to panic, but Marin assures that she is just messing with him. She tells him to not think much about others' opinion and just do what you like. She holds Gojo's hand and takes him shopping. On reaching the store, Gojo shows the items that need to be bought to complete the outfit. Marin is amazed to see how much work Gojo has put in just two days. Without any delay, they start their shopping. After finishing it, they have a bowl of ramen in a nearby shop. As they were leaving, they talk about a particular scene from the anime. The scene involves a mature part, and they are talking about it so casually, that the office workers standing in line are speechless to witness how fast high schoolers are growing up. On their way home, Marin shows Gojo some of the cosplayers she really admires. However, she notices that Gojo doesn't compliment them. Gojo apologizes for having a stupid opinion, but for him, complimenting someone's beauty means a lot. After seeing his grandpa's work, he was so moved by the beauty that since then he couldn't compliment someone's beauty so casually. On the other side, Marin doesn't mind it at all. In fact, she respects his opinion. Before leaving, Marin tells Gojo about the cosplay event going to be held in about two weeks in which she will be wearing the costume. On hearing this, Gojo starts to panic. Gojo has made costumes for Hina dolls, 
but to make for an actual person he is unsure to complete it before the cosplay event begins. And on thinking about Marin's sad face he becomes more worried. Gojo arrives home. He apologizes to his grandpa for not telling him earlier that he was going to do some shopping with his friends. Grandpa is happy to hear that for once his grandson is doing something other than making Hina dolls. Suddenly the shopping bag falls and a packet of leg stockings come out. The grandpa is in shock and ends up falling. The pain he got was too much, so he has to be hospitalized. Gojo's cousin comes worried. On knowing the situation she requests grandpa to rest in her house for a couple of days. Grandpa doesn't want to cause any burden, however, he must need a few days off to get better, so he agrees. At school, Gojo tells Marin about the incident. Marin could see how much grandpa's health meant to Gojo so she comforts him. She gave her phone number just in case there is anything she can help with. Gojo exchanges the numbers and heads to the class. On his way, he sees a notice about their midterm test starting next week. Gojo starts to get nervous because, on top of making the costume, he has to study for exams, pay visits to his grandpa and also run the shop. Just by thinking all this, Gojo is mentally exhausted. But things need to be done. So till the next week, he does all the work by himself with dedication. The exams finally end. Marin tries talking to Gojo. However, he leaves without paying attention to her. Marin goes to meet him at the house, but she is unable to find him. Marin believes that after the exams are finished, Gojo finally has time to relax, so he must be meeting his grandpa. She is worried for Gojo and hopes he is taking care of his health. But in reality, Gojo is at his home, lying exhausted and feeling sick from the stress of all the work. He hasn't had a proper sleep for days and as a result, he even didn't get a chance to tidy up the house. And on top of all this, the costume is far from complete. Gojo feels pathetic for not being able to fulfill the requests of someone who appreciate his work. On thinking about Marin's smile, Gojo gets up and resumes work. Just on the date of the cosplay event, Gojo is finally able to complete the costume and is glad to see Marin will be able to attend the event now. Marin is very impressed, but she tells Gojo that there were more events like this. Even if he would have taken more time, Marin would have gladly waited. She apologizes for not telling him this. However, Gojo has a sudden rush of relief. He is happy to know there was time and Marin would have made it to the event. Marin starts crying. She apologizes for thinking that after every test, Gojo was leaving early to meet his grandpa. And to know he had been working hard on the costume all this time, she felt bad for thinking it. Gojo also apologizes for not telling her about it even after exchanging the contacts. After all the apologizing, Gojo helps Marin in wearing the costume. To choose the eyelashes, Gojo shows the photos of the dolls his grandfather made. However, while showing it, Gojo is so mesmerized by the beauty that he starts talking about his dream to become a doll maker like his grandfather. But he soon realizes that he went off topic and apologizes for it. It doesn't bother Marin. She expresses her complete confidence in Gojo's ability to fulfill his dream one day. Gojo smiles to show his appreciation for the kind words. It was at this moment, Marin suddenly feel a different kind of feeling she has never experienced. Before this, Marin was not attracted to Gojo, however, this is the turning point. With everything being done, Marin wears the costume, and she is looking gorgeous. Marin is very happy and excited to see how perfect the dress is. Gojo uses Marin's phone to take a lot of photos. They are so good that Marin there only opens a cosplay account and starts uploading them. Marin is excited and decides to attend tomorrow's cosplay event. The following day, both of them arrive at the event. Marin is very excited to see a lot of cosplayers. However, Gojo is feeling nervous because everyone is looking at them. Marin believes that it's probably the dress. But Gojo feels like they are looking at him for wearing such a casual dress. After calming down, they go upstairs. Upon reaching, a photographer approaches Marin and requests to take some photos. Marin without any hesitation agrees. It's her first time and no way she is going to miss this chance. After taking the photos, the photographer goes away. 
but soon more photographers start coming to take the pictures. Gojo is happy to see how much fun Marin is having. However, Gojo realizes that he has fulfilled his promise, and there is no reason for Marin to hang out with him. To be able to spend these days with her made him very happy. Just then, Marin comes running and in panic explains a tragedy about to happen. Gojo is worried and asks about it. Yesterday when Marin was checking the photos of her character, she noticed that the size of the melons of the character is bigger than hers. So to make up for it, she wore two nubras. However, now her clothes are about to burst. And on top of all this, her dress is very heavy and the black color is absorbing too much heat. So without wasting any time, they both go inside the building and bought a few things to cool off. And now to deal with the bursting problem, Gojo pulls the zip a little bit down. After cooling off, they head back to the home. On the train, Marin thanks Gojo for everything he did for her, and that she is looking forward to working again. On knowing they will again hang out, Gojo is really happy and promises to improve his experience and work hard. Marin pulls up her phone to show her next cosplay character, but Gojo is tired and sleepy. In the drowsy state, Gojo compliments Marin on how beautiful she was looking today. Marin is surprised because she remembers how important the beautiful word is to Gojo. She starts blushing heavily. The next day, Marin comes to Gojo's home to wash the wig. While Gojo is reading the guide, Marin is mesmerized to see Gojo's face. Just then, Grandpa returns from his granddaughter's house. To see a girl in his house, he is in shock. But later, everything is cleared up. Grandpa is impressed to see how well the costume is made. There are still many improvements, but the work is done greatly. While Gojo is talking with his grandpa about the costume, Marin finally realizes she is in mad love with Gojo. She just couldn't help but feel how cute he is. But then, unexpectedly a loud noise comes from Marin's stomach and now she is embarrassed and doesn't want to live anymore. Gojo understands it's gotten late, so he made dinner. Marin is impressed to see how Gojo is multi-talented. As the dinner continues, Grandpa asks Marin about her parents. Unfortunately, it's revealed that Marin's mother died a few years ago, and her father had a transfer so most of the time he stays away. Grandpa is worried and asks if she is having a healthy meal. Marin shows the pictures of the food she buys from the convenience store. She always buys frozen fried rice with some frozen fried chicken. Along with these, she every day drinks milk and eats yogurt. Grandpa is worried about Marin's health, so he requests her to come here often for dinner. Marin is delighted and promises to come. After dinner, Gojo drops her off at the station. However, Marin is having a hard time bidding him goodbye. She cannot resist this separation and hopes she can meet him soon. The following day, it's raining heavily. A girl, drenched in rain, stops by Gojo's house. Grandpa notices her. He invites her in after knowing she is Gojo's friend. Soon, Gojo returns from school. Before going out, Grandpa tells Gojo about a friend who has come to visit him. Gojo starts to worry because the only friend he has is Marin. And today, she is busy doing her part-time job. He believes it's a thief in disguise. With caution, he proceeds toward the room from which the light is coming. Gojo swiftly opens the door. However, he is stunned to witness a little girl. Both of them panics. Later, Gojo apologizes and asks about the purpose of her visit. The girl's name is Sejuna and she has come here to request Gojo to make a costume for her. Gojo misinterprets that Sejuna is here for the doll costumes and he excited to see young people taking an interest in Hina dolls. He asks for details regarding her age and school. However, Gojo is stunned to know Sejuna is one year older than him. All this time he was thinking of her as a middle school student. Gojo quickly notes the details and takes her to show the costumes. Sejuna is impressed to see the Hina dolls, but she is confused as these are not the costumes she is looking for. She demands where the cosplay outfits that he made for a girl. Gojo clarifies that he is not a professional and only made the costume at his friend's request. Sejuna has a wild personality. She starts to threaten him to make her the outfit, or else she will complain to the police for breaching her privacy earlier. Gojo starts to panic. 
With no other option, he agrees. Soon, Marin comes. On seeing Sejuna, she is excited because she is a big fan of her cosplays. Sejuna is a cosplayer with 100,000s of followers. Marin starts admiring her beauty and throws all the questions relating to cosplay. After Sejuna answers the questions, Marin somewhat calms down. Sejuna requests Gojo to make her a costume of Princess Lily. The outfit of this character is not available anywhere, and making them is a real hassle. That's why, after seeing Marin's photo in the costume, she just had to ask Gojo's help. Sejuna exchanges the contact info to share her measurements and other detail regarding the outfit. And just to make sure there isn't a misunderstanding, Sejuna clarifies to Marin that she just wants to talk to Gojo about the outfit, and not because she wants to flirt with her boyfriend. Gojo starts freaking out and clarifies that there is no such thing going on between them. On one side where Gojo is in panic and trying to clear the misunderstanding, on the other side, Marin is very happy. With all things being said, Marin also decides to cosplay alongside Sejuna, with the promise to share the cost of materials and any other expenses. Sejuna is a professional cosplayer who usually rents a studio to take photos. Because studios are expensive she let Marin join her in the cosplay. The next day, Gojo goes to Marin's house to get the DVDs of the anime. Marin opens the door. And Gojo enters. He is freaking out. This is the first time Gojo has ever been to a friend's house. And on top of it's Marin, he is getting nervous. He has only one purpose. Take the DVDs and immediately leave the house. However, his plan fails as Marin invites him to watch the anime together. On the couch, they sit together and start watching. During it, Marin is blushing to realize that it's almost like a home date. The fact they are the only ones in the house, Marin is getting nervous and as well as excited. She wants this moment to last forever. However, the moment didn't last, as her stomach makes noise. It's late, and Gojo understands Marin must be hungry. He takes the initiative to make the dinner. But Marin decides to make it instead. She is blushing because it almost feels like they are married. With excitement, she goes to the kitchen with the intention to make something creative. But in the end, she presents an omelette rice. Marin is upset because it didn't come out as expected. Gojo takes a bite and is amazed to see how delicious it is. Marin is really happy and promises to do better next time. The next day, Gojo has finished the anime and he starts making the costume. He gets a message from Sejuna about a meetup regarding a visit to the studio. The following day, Gojo and Marin meet up with Sejuna. There they are introduced to Sejuna's younger sister, Shinju. Just like many of you, Gojo and Marin are also in shock to know this. Gojo could see the obvious difference but didn't feel like saying anything. However, Marin just bluntly asks about her size. Gojo is in shock to hear Marin asking such an inappropriate question. But what Marin meant was Shinju's height. Because despite being in middle school, Shinju is taller than Marin. Shinju plays an important role in making sure her sister is the best cosplayer. She is in charge of taking the photos and uploading them on social media. With her father's DSLR camera, the images come out very great. And that's why Shinju insists Marin to buy one also for her cosplays. Marin is excited. However, the prices are astronomically high. She wants it badly and is ready to work hard in her part-time job. Marin out of curiosity asks if Shinju also does cosplays. But Shinju refuses. After talking for a bit more time, they head to the studio. It's an abandoned hospital that suits best the theme of the anime they are cosplaying. Upon entering, Gojo notices Sejuna seems a bit uncomfortable. Gojo went up to her and made sure everything is fine. It's revealed that Sejuna is extremely terrified of haunted places like these. But when Gojo suggests changing the location of the studio, Sejuna refuses because this is the best place to do the cosplay. Gojo could see how much passionate she is about cosplaying. Out of curiosity, he asks why she asked him to make the costume when there is plenty of more experienced and better designers. Sejuna reveals the first time she saw Marin's photo in the outfit. It was like love at first sight. The costume was so well made that she just wanted to reach out to the person who made it 
and have her own costume made. Gojo is happy to know this. He holds Sejuna's hand and promises to do his best. However, Sejuna suddenly collapses. The reason is, Sejuna is from an all-girls school, and in her entire life, she has never had physical contact with a boy around her age. The following day, it is the last day before summer break starts. After Marin's request, Gojo goes with her to the beach. There, as soon as they touch the water, Marin is amazed to see Gojo's reaction. In a joking way, she asks if it's his first time on the beach. To her surprise, it is. Even though the beach is near Gojo's house, he never thought of going anywhere, as he was only immersed in improving his skill for making Hina dolls. Marin couldn't resist and ended up asking if he would like to travel to places with her this summer. Just the two of us. Gojo is happy and expresses he would love to. On the other side, Marin is freaking out. She is scolding herself for saying just the two of us. It's been two weeks since the summer break started. And Gojo is done with the outfits. Both Marin and Sejuna are looking gorgeous. Marin is so amazed that she is having a hard time recognizing it's her. Afterward, they head out to the abandoned hospital. At the hospital, Marin and Sejuna are waiting for Shinju and Gojo. They don't know the reason why they are taking so long. After waiting for a few minutes, both of them finally arrive. But on seeing them, Marin and Sejuna are in shock. We go back to a few weeks ago, on the day everyone visited the abandoned hospital. After they were done, Shinju wanted to check out some stores in this region, so she insisted Sejuna to go home without her. After Sejuna left, Gojo approached Shinju and again asked about her interest in cosplay. Because earlier in the restaurant, her expression was the opposite of what she said. Shinju revealed her true desire. She always wanted to do cosplay. But she felt that she do cosplay, because of her bad looks, everyone would make fun of Sejuna. And then, Sejuna will start disliking her. Gojo encouraged her. He told her to not think like this because he can understand how difficult it is to tell someone your dream. He also used to think like her, but someone came and gave him the courage to think for himself. After listening to Gojo, Shinju was much more relaxed and revealed she wanted to do a role of a male character in the same anime as Marin and Sejuna. But Shinju is not confident if the clothes would even fit her. Gojo tells her to not worry and takes her to his home. There he gives his school shirt. While Shinju is wearing it, Gojo waits outside. After she is done, Gojo goes inside to check it. But the sight is very uncomfortable. And soon, the button blasts off like a bullet. Realizing how close he was to death, Gojo starts thinking of a way to shrink down Shinju's melon size. After finding a way, Gojo applied it, but still, it was hard for Shinju to hide them. So they do some research on the internet and found a way. Today, before coming to the abandoned hospital, Gojo put on the wig, applied a little makeup, and with the beholder they bought, Shinju was ready to go. Back in the present, both Marin and Sejuna are freaking out to see how wonderful Shinju is looking. Without any delay, they start taking the photos and reenacting the same scene as in the anime. While Shinju and Marin are busy taking the photos, in private, Sejuna expresses her gratitude to Gojo for helping her sister. She never imagined her sister liked cosplaying and because of it, she feels like a failure. Gojo tells her not to think like that. Because he can relate to how much courage it takes to tell anyone what you like. It is at this point, Sejuna fell in love with Gojo. On the other side, while taking Marin's photo, the beholder couldn't hold it anymore and Shinju's melons just burst out. With this, they wrap up and at home, Shinju starts editing the photos and later send them to Gojo and Marin. A few days later, Gojo and Marin hang out in Shibuya to enjoy their summer vacation. Gojo hasn't come to this region and finds himself a bit nervous. For all the hard work Gojo did to help in making the costume, Marin decides to gift him a shirt. While Gojo is changing, Outside, the salesman is stunned to see how gorgeous Marin is looking. He wonders if the man inside is her boyfriend. On seeing Gojo, the salesman feels like puking, but still compliments that the shirt looks good. However, on the other side, Marin couldn't say a word. She starts making Gojo wear other outfits as well. 
But no matter which dress he wears, Marin just couldn't understand how someone this good-looking can exist in this world. She wants to gift him all the shirts, but then she would go broke. At last, they both decide to buy the same shirt for each other. Later, they had fun eating ramen and ice cream. After doing all this, they go to an internet cafe. There, Gojo is a bit uncomfortable because the space is not that much and he is too close to Marin. Marin shows a manga she bought recently. The story is about a female demon who fell in love with an otaku boy. She really loves the female character and wants to do the cosplay. However, she feels that the half pigtails wouldn't look good on her and she would ruin the character. With a serious face, Gojo tells her to not doubt herself because he believes it would look great on her. Marin starts to blush. After hearing this from the person she loves, Marin promises to do it. Marin goes out to bring some stuff. And while she is gone, Gojo looks at the character to get a grasp of what he is going to make. But upon checking it, he is in shock to see that there aren't enough details to make the costume. And this time, he would have to rely on his own creativity. A few days later, Gojo is done with the costume. And with Marin, he is standing in front of a building. It's a place where Marin decided to take the photo as it suits the story's theme very well. Gojo doesn't realize it at first but after entering the room he realizes it's a love hotel. He starts freaking out. Without any delay, Marin goes to change her outfit. And for the meantime, Gojo calms himself down. He turns on the TV but soon realizes it is a mistake. But on a side note, since Marin is still changing, Gojo turns the TV on and has a little peek. But just then, Marin comes out and in a panic, Gojo turns off the TV. Marin is very happy to see how well the costume turned out. Gojo was not very confident in the work, but upon seeing Marin's reaction he is glad. After putting up the makeup and other materials, Marin is looking great. With it, Gojo starts taking photos from various angles. Gojo marked all the possible poses in the manga while he was reading it. And for the last pose, he gets on the bed and tells Marin to get on top of him. After she sits, Gojo takes the photo. The point of view is great, and the photo turned out amazing. Marin is really happy with it, and expresses how much fun she had today. But just then Gojo realizes what's a situation he has put himself in. He starts to panic and tries to get up, but accidentally hit the remote and the light turns off. They end up in a very unusual position. Strangely they start to come forward and are about to kiss, but just then the telephone rings. Gojo picks up and they are notified about their time being ended. Marin is blushing. She wishes the telephone hadn't rung. After changing, they head back to their home. The next day, at Marin's house, she is doing her homework while Gojo is helping her. After she completes it, they both watch a horror movie. It is Marin who picks the genre and she seems pretty calm about it. However, it's not the case with Gojo. But as the movie goes on, all the calmness Marin had goes away and now she is extremely terrified. While on the other side, Gojo is really enjoying it. The next day is the last day of summer vacation. Gojo heads out to meet up with Marin for the firework festival. After some time, Marin comes wearing a yukata. Upon seeing her, Gojo is heavily blushing. Marin notices the reaction and soon her heart starts to pound heavily. There is some time for the fireworks to start so before that they buy a lot of food. Finally, the firework begins. It's a very beautiful sight. With it being Gojo's first time, he is amazed. Because before he always stayed busy working on the Hina dolls. But today he is really glad to come and share the moment with Marin. After all the walking they did, Marin's feet are hurting. Gojo tries to go to bring some bandages, but Marin stops him and gets on his back. At first, Gojo was very nervous but soon he calms down, and while carrying her he head to the station. On the way, Marin suggests that the next year they should go to a different region to watch the fireworks. Gojo agrees. He is happy to know they will be together the next year also. Back in the home, as Gojo is about to sleep, he receives a call from Marin. He picks it up and got to know that Marin is terrified after she watched a horror movie. In fear, someone will come from the mirror. 
Marin requests Gojo if they could just talk before she goes to sleep. Gojo agrees. Hours pass by and they have a fun time talking and sharing their life moments and experiences. Gojo is in a drowsy state. He listens to Marin's stories and gives a one-word response. After some time, Marin could hear Gojo sleeping. Using this moment, she confesses her love and bids him good night. If you enjoyed the recap, please consider liking and subscribing this channel. Have a wonderful day ahead.